What's up everybody? Welcome back to Let's Play Death Road to Canada with Dog and Pony. I'm Dog and Pony and this is Death Road to Canada. We're back with our familiar faces here, Trevor and Bobby. Are we playing? We're playing rare characters mode. All right, and we just got this car right at the end of the last episode. All right, DSYP, the group finds a man in a bathroom. The man says nothing. He may be upset that you barged into a bathroom, but his face is expressionless. So who knows? He's purple for some reason. Pinkish purple. It's it's looking like he's a rare character, so of course we are going to recruit him. All right, DSYP seems to accept your offer. He didn't say anything or even react at all, except he did get into the car. If he doesn't jump out, then it's a done deal. DSYP joins the team onward to Canada. Okay. This is most likely a reference to something. I'm just not entirely sure what. Trapped in house, the group is about to explore a small house when they notice that a horde of, a horde is creeping nearby. The group will have to hold their ground for a bit before they can escape. Siege alert, all right, moderate late morning, one hour. This shouldn't be too bad, as long as we've got enough space to deal with them. We don't need all three of these, but Bobby does need a weapon. The SYP has a cardboard tube, and he can drop it, all right. But we'll let him keep it, it's what he started with. Why not let him have it? We don't know much about him at all. All right. I think we know the bare minimum that we are capable of knowing about him. Okay, so far so good. There's not too many zombies in here. And uh, none have come in through the door yet, which is, you know, no longer the case, but a good thing nonetheless. Um, we, we gotta keep a clear path to the door. We should explore while the, while the crowd is small. So let's see if there's any loot we want it and there's not it's it's just an empty building all blocked off with debris here so pretty much we just got to survive Trevor is so weak it's ridiculous maybe I'll control Bobby instead I think she'll be a little easier or even DSYP he'll be at the very least interesting this is just about to the end of the siege, and uh, we gotta clear our path to the door as quickly as possible here. All right. We don't wanna leave anyone behind, so we need everyone to be able to have a clear path. And uh, that didn't work out very well. All right. We'll let them come up here first. Maybe get a chair ready. We need them not to go on the other side of the stairs too. Okay, this should be fine. I think if we go down now, we'll be safe. All right, that's fine. DSYP is stuck. Nope, he's good. He... Okay, this should be fine. Let... Yes, let's go. Okay, cool. 10 food left is enough for just under two days. If we get two more, we'll be fine for a while. Glimmer of hope. Let's do fitness. We don't even know what it is. Probably not a good idea to train two in something that could already be pretty decent. So let's do... Morale and random skill gain, because we all need a little bit of morale. And no one needs to heal up at all. We got out of that safely. Trevor's morale increases, Bobby's morale increases, as does DSYP's. And then we got Trevor, Bobby, and DSYP getting strength, strength, and shooting in that order. All right. We don't know Trevor's strength, but I'm pretty sure it's terrible, so I'm glad it got trained a little bit. Should make him better at carrying stuff. Though that might be fitness. Okay. His strength might be fine, and his fitness just doesn't let him hold stuff for very long. In the morning, there's a moose outside the camp who looks injured and is just glaring at the group. Even injured, a moose is a really powerful creature. Probably best not to mess with it. We don't want to shoot it, though DSYP did just train his shooting. But maybe we'll do... We'll, we'll heal it up. I want to see if that gets us like some karma or something like that. Bobby tries to help the injured moose. She patches it up a little. The moose is too confused by this gesture of kindness to maul her. Uh, morale increased and loyalty is revealed. That's overall a positive outcome. I don't think it's going to have any long-term effects, but knowing her loyalty is great and having her morale as high as it can be is definitely positive. Even if her loyalty was revealed as terrible, that's still something. Whoa! It's Dog and Pony. It's nice to see a familiar face. He pokes the dirt with a stick. Maybe he is drawing plans, maybe just poking the dirt with a stick. Knowing me, it's the second one. 
He's charming and he is a friend of dog, but I think we're gonna go ahead and leave him behind so we can recruit more rare characters. We don't really have enough food to have him around anyway. If we do pick up four more food, I'd rather have that uh, two food surplus than get right back down to zero next time we all eat. So we're gonna leave him behind. The bigger the weapon, the more things I can hit in one swing. That's probably true, Trevor. Thank you for pointing it out. Your money versus your life. Bandits catch the group by surprise in a really terrible spot for them to fight in. They demand that all food and half of the supplies are handed over. We are going to run for it. The group decides to make a run for it, thinking that the hard-won supplies are worth the risk. The bandits start shooting. Uh, Trevor's hurt twice. Terrible fitness. Bobby's hurt twice. Terrible fitness. And DSYP is hurt twice. Terrible fitness. All three of us have really, really bad fitness stats. That's not good. And none of us are tired. That's that's bad. That is a bad, bad thing. But we're healing up. We're almost out of medical supplies. Maybe shouldn't have wasted them on that moose. While driving on the death road, the group decides to make a stop for supplies. The grocery store is probably going to be better. I think we could survive. No one except Trevor is at really low health so we'll just we'll leave him behind and get some food so we don't starve for the night we don't want our morale to start dropping it's a very thick but sluggish swarm so it shouldn't be too bad we'll shop for danger uh trevor's gonna rest bobby is our de facto leader we'll we'll switch it over to dsyp just for the sake of interest and we lost a bunch of weapons i don't know how that happened Maybe Bobby's all broke and so did DSYP's and then uh, only Trevor's rebar was left intact after the last siege. That's all I can think of that could have happened. So I'm going to give that to DSYP. There we go. Okay. We'll see how he does with it. Maybe he's really good with uh, melee, but I doubt it. Like hand to hand. So I, I think I'm just going to keep him with the weapon. Uh, there's, they weren't lying when they said this swarm was very thick. So we're, we, we want to take them out in the parking lot, but at the same time, since they are so sluggish, it might be safer just to make it so they never detect us to begin with. We only need two food to survive for the night, but if we get eight food, that's two nights. I, I know we won't die from having one night without food, but it's it, we're, we're better off getting as much as we can in this one go. And if Bobby dies, it's not the like worst case scenario for us. As long as we bo both don't die. If one of us stays alive, we're fine. Bobby should pick up that knife. All right, good. I was a little worried she wasn't going to do it, and I was going to have to switch characters to, to force her to pick the knife up. It happens every once in a while. We'll get out of here while it's, like, clear. Maybe close that door? Yeah, okay. That should keep us safe for a couple seconds, at least. There's a lot of food here. I don't know if we should keep trying to get more, or if we should just go with the 17 we already picked up. We are about to get mobbed from both directions here. Bobby's gonna die. That's that's it for her. So maybe with that as a distraction, we can pick up a little bit more food here. All these zombies out here aren't gonna care about her, but that giant swarm that was kinda sticking to me is now gone, at least uh, for now. We'll get to like 30 and then reevaluate. All right. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep going. This seems pretty safe at the moment. Ooh, a, a refrigerator. It's, you know, three food, but it's something. And there was one more doorway down here. Great. We shouldn't stay past probably like 3 p.m. is what I'm gonna go with, but we're gonna keep looting until then. Or until it's empty, of course. Oh, that was bad. Okay, that could have been worse. It, was, it, it turned out fine. All right, there's a few more shelves full of food. 
We could probably get up to like 50 if we got every every single uh, food item here. Maybe even more than that. There is so much here. It is. It's we're not that far into the into the game, so you'd expect there to be less. Usually, the the farther you go, the better the looting is, and it's still pretty early on. So, this is gonna be this is gonna be like a, a good chance to avoid the harder things later on. The more food we have now, the better off we'll be for longer. I think it's time to get back to the car, though. All right, we're safe. Out here, they're pretty spread out. All right, almost back. Let me sneak through here. Okay, good. Nice. And we got close to 50, if not more than. 49, so we're up to 53, and that's gonna last us quite a long time. If we can finish healing everybody up, we're gonna be in a pretty good position to, to, to make it, you know, through the long haul here. Quiet town, it's so quiet here, there's no signs of life or unlife. It seems like everyone took what they could and evacuated this town immediately. Uh, we could probably scavenge it pretty safely. Loot it quickly probably won't get us anything. It looks like, you know, because They, they took what they could and evacuated. So, if we loot quickly, we won't get much. If we rest, we won't get anything. And if we rest for three days, we won't get anything and then we'll use a whole bunch of the food we just picked up. So, I'm gonna scavenge the town thoroughly and hope for the best. Not good, the group com combs the town for supplies left behind but gets ambushed by a single zombie. Unfortunately, the zombie found DSYP first. DSYP is hurt and killed. Surprisingly enough, he had full health or close to it, so I don't know how he got killed. Uh, we got pistol ammo, rifle ammo, and seven more food. So we're flush with food, but about to die. Which, you know, the food doesn't really help if there's no one to eat it. So we found a crowded campsite. We find a large campsite that is occupied by a few carloads of other survivors. Camping with strangers is risky, but there's nowhere else to go. We can't have Trevor be tired. If we're gonna die we might as well well go out with a bang instead of a whimper we're gonna camp with them all right Trevor takes a risk and goes to sleep in the crowded camp nothing unusual happens and then we eat two food fantastic we're about to run out of gas and being on the road on foot alone with one medical supply is gonna be dangerous the car is broken down from use and abuse it won't start up again we're gonna abandon it it broke down before we ran out of gas, but even if we do manage to fix it, it's just going to waste our time. Trevor's good at fixing cars, but it doesn't matter that much when we have five gasoline left. Might as well save it for the next car. All right. While walking through the woods, Trevor doesn't pay attention to where he's going and falls into a deep puddle of water. His gear is fully submerged, putting supplies in danger. We lost three food. That's not too bad. And some ammo, but we don't have any guns anyway. His morale is going down. Hopefully, he doesn't abandon the journey. He, I don't know if that can happen when we only have one person, but if it can, we're at a severe risk of it because his morale is now at the lowest possible value. While walking, Trevor stubs his toe badly. It's not a big deal, but it's really annoying. He's hurt. He's upset. He's close to death. One more bad thing could kill him. And with a very thick and hunting swarm, it's very unlikely that we're going to reach the car at the end of this street, but we'll try it anyway. What else are we going to do? We have no weapons because DSYP was holding our rebar when he died. If we can get through here without getting hurt, I would be amazed. We do need to pick up some gas. If we get in the car and don't have any gas, there's, there's really no point to this whole thing anyway. So we're going to hopefully get a little bit more than we've already gotten. There's one more car to loot, and I hope it's not ammo. Oh, it's a medical supply. All right, I guess that's not bad we got a cop car here so that's cool i guess we're gonna try to get this canister of gasoline we're up to 62 gas if we could just get it into the car but no we couldn't quite make it so uh while this slowly fades out we have died on the death road to canada dang it we're gonna start up another new game and we'll just use random characters this time around uh we got jody a uh, Gungeoneer and Resilient type, fine with me, and Elise, Alicia, Surgeon and Bandit, uh, uh, 
I want someone that can fix cars. I think I skipped a few of them. This works for me. Uh, Giles is a paranoid mechanic. Paranoid will help us out in a lot of bandit situations and things like that. And a mechanical be able to fix cars. Are we still on great characters mode? We weren't, so I'm glad I checked. Let's get going here. All right. Scavenge for all the ammo you can. Build up the skills of your team. You'll need to become stronger. Okay. That's pretty generic advice, but I'll do my best to follow it. Embarking on the death road, we're going to stop at the Yalmar, as we always do. We're going to go bargain hunting. We got a crowbar and a wrench. I think he starts with the wrench because he's a mechanic. And it's better than starting with a piece of wood or an umbrella. We'll find out a little bit about their strength and fitness by picking stuff up and carrying it. We won't know the actual values, but we'll have a general idea of what they are. And it's helpful to, you know, throw the shopping cart, so win-win. Maybe a toilet genie here? No such luck. But the gasoline doesn't hurt. I'd like to get like five food and a gun. If we can get five food and a gun, I will be very happy. We've gotten but three food and here's a pistol so so far so good the uh, storage room should have a little bit more food here medical supplies are nice and this incredible amount of gas wouldn't really uh, it, it makes me a little less upset that it, we're probably not gonna get five food I mean four food is plenty and uh, like 60 plus gas is probably better anyway one more toilet, one more chance at a toilet genie, and again, no such luck. All right, I think that's everything that we're gonna find here, so we'll kill a couple more zombies and then get back on the road. I'll pick up the femur as well, just so we have an additional weapon in case they all break again. We don't wanna be stuck with a single rebar. It, it, it just doesn't work when you have three people that are trying to survive here. All right. Not a bad start, for sure. That medical supply, I'm sure, will come in handy. It's definitely better to start out with a character that has six right away, but when you're encountering a fire, it, it doesn't really help. The group goes against their judgment and camps in a city apartment because there's no zombies around. When they wake up, the building is on fire. Giles is cool about fire safety. I've never seen this option, and I'm hoping it's a good one. Giles always has a fire safety plan prepared. It doesn't matter where he is, Giles constantly thinks up new fire safety plans. All supplies were saved, no one was injured, and Giles' morale increases. That's awesome. I think that might be new in one of the recent updates, and I'm happy about it. It could be because he's paranoid. I hope it doesn't rain. It seems to irritate the zombies. Yes. Uh, bandit raid defense. Uh, Giles is probably going to be our go-to guy for this one as well, but let's see what it says. The group is asked for help by a settlement. They say they will be raided by bandits soon. If the group helps with the defense, they will get a reward of 15 food, some ammo, and a cowboy rifle. This could be very dangerous. We're going to go ahead and build up their defenses. All right, Giles tries to build up the settlement's defenses. He tells the settlers how to build fortifications in some weak areas. The extra defenses seem to help a lot in the bandit attack. The settlers are thankful for the help. Mechanical is revealed is not too good, but it increased and we got the ammo, the food, and the gun as well. And our morale is going up, up, up. Giles is as, is as high as it can be. Back on the road, and I'm going to take a quick drink here. So, I think that fire safety thing is a new addition. And I think it's going to relate to people who are paranoid, which should help us out when we do familiar faces with Exarn, because she has the paranoid trait, and it's it looks like it's going to be even more useful than it was before. The group reaches the city as it starts to rain. The drizzle seems to rile up the local zombies. They're m mild in number, but irritated. And uh, we've, we're going to discover the either a medical clinic or a pet shop. We'll go to the medical clinic so that we can get a bunch more medical supplies and heal up if we need to. I'm gonna leave the femur behind. We don't really need it, and we could use the extra looting slot there. We'll go to each building as we find them. So, we'll start with this house. 
All right, just an empty bathroom. Good start. Just, you know, some debris and zombies. That's fine. This this is not a very good uh, house to loot. But, okay, I thought that was going to be food. Gasoline is fine, too. Pistol ammo is actually nice because we do have a pistol and it could come in handy. And uh, we haven't even reached our medical clinic yet, but we have found a medical supply. So, looking promising on that front. One more room. And, uh... Useless ammo and some useful ammo as well. So, so far so good. Glad I didn't get hurt there. That was pretty close. Oh. Gotta work on my aim a little bit. Easy clinic. This'll hopefully gain us at least six more medical supplies. That's, that's what I want. Our fitness can't be high because we are getting fatigued so quickly from like two or three swings and we can't even turn around to face the direction we're moving yet or anymore that's pretty crazy and she can't lift the filing cabinet so I think her strength is probably pretty low and her fitness is pretty low as well um that wasn't a great room this isn't a great room we'd really like to find more medical supplies please it's kind of what was promised when we came into the clinic I need to close that door for safety it, it's temporary but hopefully it, they don't build up too much or we're able to find a way around them when they when we got to go back through that way okay here's the medical supplies and maybe a few more in that other room as well so far so good we're up to seven so I'm I'm happy with it we will check out the other room of course and hopefully get a couple more but we've got a decent amount so if I don't find any more, and it looks like we're not going to, uh, that, that's totally fine. All right, that was a, a lot safer than I thought it was gonna be. I'm not sure if there's another block up above to loot, but we're definitely gonna look. Yeah, it looks like it. And uh, an apartment building. So we might be able to get some more food as well. We've got plenty after helping out that settlement. I think we're doing pretty great on loot, like much better than we were in the last run. Of course, at the end we got a ton of food, we just never really got a chance to use it. If we had found a trader camp, we probably would have been able to salvage that run, but we were a little bit unlucky there. And I can't believe DSYP died so easily. I could have sworn he had more health than just, just the one that he got hit for. All right, it's getting a little dark here, so we're gonna wanna get back to the car soon. And we do have plenty of stuff. We'll look and see if there's another house, but we probably shouldn't stay out much more than another like 40 minutes in game. We spent a lot of time in that first house for very little loot. Oh, wow, they, they really built up outside here. I think we, we probably probably didn't need to take our gun out but better safe than sorry and there's nothing else here for us so we're gonna just head back to the car with a little bit of time to spare all right that was pretty good we got eight more food uh the 11 gas isn't much but having over 150 is definitely nice and eight medical supplies is fantastic if we do get hurt in the future we'll be able to heal right up all right that is all for now, but thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button. Excuse me. Make sure to click that like button and subscribe if you want to see more in the future. I will see you in the next episode.